Right, it's so windy outside. Ooh. It's quite stormy outside actually. Hi, I'm Matt and this is Not Enough Tech. I know, I've got an idea. What if you could link RF signals, the one that use 433 MHz um, radius, to your IoT home automation setup? I guess I'm in luck, but because I've got from Banggood the son of RF Bridge, and uh, well, I guess I was slightly mistaken to what it does and what it cannot do, and I guess this is the purpose of this video, to explain what you can do with Son of RF Bridge and probably what you can't do. So if your home setup uses RF signals like the one coming from this RF remote, which is quite neat, or maybe a Son of Basic R3 RF, or even a dimmer, which I spoke about, this is dimmer D1 from Son of as well, which I spoke about it in here, then you could use RF Bridge to link these with your IoT setup. Now there is a small problem. Apart from this remote, all devices are already connected, so when would you use RF Bridge and why? I have to admit, at first I was slightly mistaken to what RF Bridge is supposed to do. In my imagination I could use any RF signals to translate it into EWLink app connectivity and yeah, you probably discovered the flaw in my thinking. So, to clarify, what you can do with RF Bridge is to use existing solar devices that actually support that technology and integrate, it, uh, integrate them with an uh, eWilink app. Which means that the list of compatible devices which you can see in here right now, it's not as impressive as you might initially think. It's still quite cool and it still has probably its own uses and I'm going to tell you all about the Son of RF Bridge and we can even look inside to see what's in there. But first, let's get rid of this light because we're going to use it for my tutorial. So let's take a look at my setup in here. What I've got in here, it's a RF uh, Son of Basic. This is R3 version. I've talked about R3 version before, so if you want to uh, know more, just uh, there's a link in here for you. Um, this is obviously linked to my light and this is a Son of Basic, so you probably know already how it works. You've connected. Uh, than before. Now what's different about this particular uh, son of is that it's not actually linked to my eWilling app. It's only connected to this remote so there is no smart connectivity going on whatsoever. I can obviously use the A button in here to turn the light on and I can press it again to turn the light off and that will work just fine. Now I synchronized this with a Son of RF remote, which you can see in here, which means I have now four buttons from this remote control mapped to this uh, EWLink application and I can use them uh, via virtual remote. So when I press the button A, which is responsible for this setup, I can toggle the lights on and off and that's brilliant. Because right now, even though this setup isn't connected to my local network, I can still operate it via eWilink app from wherever I want. So this is the basic concept and that's how a Son of RF works. It will receive some signals from Son of devices and you'll be able to use them in the eWilink app. Son of RF despite using 433 MHz radio, has a limited options in terms of what you can connect to it. And if you go to the Son of RF bridge and then try to devices, you will see that you have a support for up to four buttons, uh, the remotes, uh, there is a curtain remote and alarms for all the doors and PR sensors. If you go to scenes, you'll see that you can use the RF bridge uh, to um, trigger something or to perform an action. And in the triggers, you'll see that RF supports well, something that is called alarms, however they mean uh, the door sensors or the PR sensors that you can uh, use and send signals via RF. Now, if you go to actions, you'll see that you can perform certain actions with some of a bridge. And in this case, I have a buttons enabled so I can actually trigger one of the buttons in here using this device when the remote isn't present. 
Due to hardware restrictions, Son of RF comes with a memory for 16 different RF signals, which means a remote like this with four different buttons would count as four different devices because I have four different buttons. So in total you could use four uh, remotes or make combinations of uh, one remote and a couple of other devices. Let's go through the setup process and then we're gonna open it up and see what's inside the Son of RF bridge and is it possible to use it with test motor. We're going to start obviously with connecting the Son of device. So plug it in or use the pairing button if you can't see the device blinking in this pattern. Once it's blinking in this pattern, just go ahead and add it using a quick pair option in your eWilink app, provide your 2.4 gigahertz uh, network details and within a couple of seconds you should see the device being added to the list. Just going to name one and once it's there I'll be able to use it and pair it with my remote. So to pair the buttons individually you just have to hold it until it beeps and then hold long press and hold the button you want to pair like this you'll hear another beep and do it for every single button you've got in there or another device if you have uh, alarms. Just to watch when I press the button, watch what happens, it will actually confirm that the signal is received and you can trigger the same signal by pressing the button itself. For screws are keeping the device together and at the bottom of the PCB you're gonna have two GPIO pins 12 and 14 and two antennas. Now if you peel off the LCD highlight you'll have access to the Wi-Fi chip and this is not 8266 this is 8285. Just be extra careful when bending uh, these pins because otherwise you might break it off. Now on the board itself you can see the chip setter which is as I mentioned 80 285 and it's located in here and there are also a couple of sets of GPIO pins with a standard pitch. Now first we have a serial interface in here uh, there is uh, also so GPIO exposed, uh, GPIO 5 and 4 uh, there is, I think, SPI. This is uh, interface SPI and then there is another serial which is also used for flashing Speaking of flashing, I actually had a look at Tasmota and there is Tasmota firmware for Sonoff RF Bridge. However, if you're gonna look through the Tasmota tutorial on how to flash it and what kind of results you can um, receive from this uh, firmware, it quickly becomes apparent that this is slightly more advanced. You'll be asked to actually flash the RF chipset as well with a custom firmware. So this is not as straightforward as using Tasmota with other son of products. In all honesty guys, this is going to have only niche applications. Now, this device has three things going for it. Once being a price, which is priced between seven to 10 pounds, which is in terrible expensive. Second thing is the RF signal benefits which means a long distance and relatively low power consumption now as long as you can live with a very low data transfer bandwidth while you can flash the smolta on some of rf bridge i don't think i'm gonna do it i know it's gonna increase the number of supported devices and it will give me access to a raw data coming out from this box However, frankly speaking, that's my only RF, RF device that I like and uh, I'm not using it that much. Most of my home automation is Zigbee based and I think I'm gonna be following that direction instead. But if you enjoy playing with RF, consider having a look at Son of RF and consider tasmatizing it to get better results. As for now guys, you know what to do. If you're new to the channel, I do not have a posting schedule, so consider following me on one of the social media listed down below for your convenience. That way you're gonna get notified whenever there is a video or article out. Thanks so much for watching guys, and I'm gonna see you in the next video. Take care, bye. I know, what about connect? I didn't ask you Google. But first, let's get rid of this light because we're going to use it for my tutorial.